guys, how are we doing? It's Martin Cliff here with another video. It's another gorgeous sunny morning. It is Easter Monday, um, but it won't be by the time you see this, I'm sure, because I shot three or four videos yesterday, I think. Um, I'm playing Snowy. I haven't played Snowy a whole lot in videos recently, um, but I wanted to just kind of talk about why Snowy is still special, despite all the higher end, or supposedly higher end guitars that I've got. Now, Snowy was my first, I'm not going to say my first proper guitar because I would say that that was my Shovel 275 that I got when I was 15 and I had for 7 or 8 years until one too many mods um, meant that it didn't survive um, a couple of things that happened so in about 2003-2004 um, it ended up being irreparable, um, very sad. It was a great sounding guitar. But in 2004, um, I got this. I'd been playing cheap guitars uh, between those points. I had an Ibanez G07 string, I had a Squire Affinity Telecaster, I had cheap acoustics. I wasn't playing a whole lot of guitar for a while, and uh, I was playing mostly bass, uh, and I just didn't have any money. I was a student. Um, from what, 2000 to 2003. So, 2004, I, I bought this. Um, it's got undergone a few minor changes. Um, this is the fourth set of pickups on the guitar. It came with the stock AH1, AH2, oddly, the Ebenezer Infinity pickups. Um, I then put in the Joseph Triani pair of a I think it was a Fred and a PAF Joe, um, which at the time were the Satriani ones, he then moved on uh, to the Mojo and something else. Um, then for a long while um, it had a D Sonic in the bridge and an Air Norton in the neck. Um, those are currently sat at home in a box. Uh, they may go in another guitar in the future. Um, but the pickups in this now are a Sir. DSH Plus in the bridge and an SSV in the neck. Um, the volume knob has been replaced four times, I think. Uh, I wear them out. Um, the town pot, I think, has been replaced a couple of times. It's the uh, coil tap switch that, that has failed on that once, and then the actual tone knob failed another time. Um, pickup selector switch is original. Tuners are have been replaced with locking tuners. I'm not using the, the Floyd, well, the Edge 2 bridge anymore, so it's got a um, Tremel No system put in it. Um, at the moment, I don't have the locking nut on. Uh, I, I go backwards and forth as to whether I, I do that. Um, at the moment, I'm experimenting more with different tunings, so it's easier not to have the nut on. Um, but probably if I was going to gig this guitar, I would lock it up so it would hold its tuning perfectly. It's still pretty darn good. Um, and this, this guitar is the one guitar I have here in Hong Kong that has humbuckers and coil splits, not coil taps. We always called them coil taps, but apparently that's not what they are. Um, and it just sounds really good. So, with no effects on, just plug straight into the amp. The bridge pickup. Humbucker mode is really quite, quite pokey. But it'll clean up quickly. configuration, both pickups on, which I tend to use a lot, both in single coil and in humbucker, it's really quite, um, quite fat, it's not as bright, it doesn't push the amp as hard, well if I hit hard, 
it's still going to break up. If you play gently, it really responds to picking dynamics. So it's obviously thinner than, than the humbucker, but it's um, got a little bit more body to it than the, the neckbook above of one of the Sirs, um, because you still get a bit of that kind of humbucker feel to it. Um, I don't know. They always say that a, um, a split humbucker is never the same as a single coil, and it's definitely true. Switching across to the bridge single coil, it's not got the snap of the telly, but it's got kind of its own vibe. through the number of different amp combinations and pedal combinations um, that I've used this guitar with over the years. Um, when I got it I was playing a set of Boss pedals through a couple of Laney LC15s. I then had the big PV rig with all the MIDI switching and all that. Then I went to the solid state modelling with the GSP1101 um, which you know, sounded pretty great for what it was. And then I got the Ignators um, and I've also played this through the Ibanez TSA15 and I've played it through my Laney Cub back in England. Um, it's just a great, great sounding guitar. Um, I used to use it for teaching all the time, so that meant it was even playing it through a LG12, I want to say. A uh, little 50 quid practice amp. And even, even with that, it just had a certain amount of soul to it. Um, probably the amount of love, tears, blood, sweat I've poured into this um, over the years contributes to the, to the vibe it has. It's a thinnish neck, it's quite a rounded neck, it just feels really great. I can't even remember now whether it was satin finished or gloss finished. It's kind of somewhere in between because it's either worn in, um, so I've worn away the gloss or I've worn so much of me into it that it's taken the satin and turned it glossy, I don't know, it's kind of halfway in between. Um, 
action's low, plays really great, needs a refret, um, has needed a refret for a long time. But I'm a little reluctant to do anything with it because it's just been such an important part of me for so long. Um, yeah, fabulous guitar and definitely holds its own um, against anything else I have. Um, I say the other do double humbucker guitar I've got is my Les Paul. This doesn't sound anything like that. Um, my Telecaster obviously sounds completely different, feels completely different, plays completely different. My Sirs feel pretty close, but sound very different. Um, I'm not a shredder, it's not really a shredder guitar. It's just a guitar with a lot of soul, a lot of vibe, and that's why it's so special. So that's been an interesting little peek at this special guitar. Till next time, take care. I'll speak to you soon.